Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 21 of my 3D printed scrap metal sculpture inspired Geiger alien xenomorph suit. Last time I worked on putting some lighting in the head using Tallman tea glass to make 3D printed baubles and using some LEDs sequenced with an Arduino Nano. This time we're going to work on the left arm. When I first started this project I've done the right arm, which is a combination of Ninja Flex and ABS parts, and the right hand but I never got round to actually 3D printing the left version. So we're going to do something a bit special with that. We're going to make it look like the arm is severed, again with some green glowing sections printed in tea glass with some glowing lights in. We're also going to have a hand controller built in there so that I can actually control the animatronics in the head of the suit and control the lighting patterns. But I need a little controller more than just a switch to operate that. So let's have a look at some components. I've got two things here, one is the Arduino Nano, which is the same as the one that I put in the head, which has got the programming socket and the pins are on the bottom there to easily breadboard or solder to another board. And I've also got this controller, which is one of these little joystick things or a thumb stick or whatever you want to call it. And that's got some pins out for analog values in either direction. And it's also got a switch. Um, and the switch is just to one side here. And that's got a switch pin, so it basically takes five volts and grounds. It gives you two analog values and a switch value, which is a digital switch. Um, it doesn't switch very well when it's in the um, far extremes. It only really works well in the middle. Uh, but nonetheless, I've got varying um, amounts there that we can read from with an Arduino. And one switch in the middle, so we probably don't need all the functions. We could just use the extremes of each potentiometer there that gives me the analog values and the switch value to trigger five functions so that'll be perfectly adequate i quite like to be able to hold this in my hand like um, a nintendo nunchuck or wii remote or whatever you want to call it um, but also have it so it drops out so i can use my hand to help me suit up so i'm probably going to make a stick for this to go on that holds the arduino in the body which dangles on a cable the rest of the forearm is going to be a wraparound section made of NinjaFlex and ABS. So here the red section is NinjaFlex and the blue is ABS which will be printed as a hybrid print on dual extruders. So they're both bonded together with heat during the time of printing. There's some channels in the bottom there for wires to run. The green sections are again going to be Tallman tea glass so they're slightly translucent. And the holes that go in the bottom there are to insert big LEDs. So this is going to wrap around the forearm with the uh, longest section being on the outside around where the elbow is and those two shorter sections coming around the top and the inside of the forearm. I'm probably going to have another one of these green modules, maybe two, on the back of the hand. Um, and the hand will of course be where that hand controller is held. That may have a green section on it as well because the Arduino Nano has some LEDs on um, which can glow and therefore we can have a panel on our hand held stick. Uh, which glows due to those LEDs. But first of all I'm going to get this printed out and assembled and I'm also going to try and print a sort of stick with a hole in to put the Arduino in and then we'll see where we are. Here are all the parts, I've printed quite a few of these, well five of them to be precise, four for the arm and one for the back of the hand which will probably stick onto the glove with velcro. I've got this section which has got the bendy ninja flex piece in the middle and the rest is rigid ABS so that's pretty tough. Obviously these mounts on here which they'll be glued on and LEDs glued in the hole with the wires running around. I also printed these parts which um, I didn't show you but they are they were printed a while ago which are for the bicep and the shoulder belt so those match the right arm. And lastly this piece which um, has got some mounting holes on top and a hole for the wires to run in to put the little thumbstick thing on. Now I did prototype one which was actually bigger and um, had a hole in the top but it had to be much wider so it actually covered the circuit board basically. Um, but it had to be so wide that I couldn't really hold it. Um, these are great on a flat surface perhaps but if you want to make something like this and um, kind of leave enough flexibility for this thing 
then it has to be much wider than the board it's mounted on. So for now, I'm just going to have it screwed to the top. And inside, of course, we've got the Arduino Nano will fit nicely in there. And we can program it through the hole in the bottom as well as running the wires out. And I may put that green section on so the um, LEDs inside will shine through it. So we better get sticking and putting some LEDs and things in. So I've assembled that arm. So I've got my green things. This one is Velcroed onto the glove, which has worked quite well. And I'm obviously ha holding the hand controller, which has got nothing in it at the moment. That'll eventually be hooked onto a wire that goes into the bottom of these. I uh, might need to adjust those conduit lengths, but on the whole, it's feeling okay. And when those light up green, it's going to look pretty good. So I need to put some LEDs in and then look at some coding on the Arduino Nano. So I'm almost done with the wiring. I'm using Adafruit NeoPixels, which are these very tiny individually addressable LEDs. And these come on individual boards. They also come in other configurations such as rings and strips and so on. And I put one into each of these modules. Now I've made a bit of an error with the infill density on the tea glass, so the light doesn't come through them very well. But these are pretty bright and I've left the last one out just so I can show you how bright they are. So if I just plug my Arduino in, you find they light up in order, which is the standard NeoPixel code. So that's pretty bright. It's not too bad, it'll work quite well in the dark. But I just need to get that last one in. Then I need to get my little thumb controller attached to the Arduino. And I can do some coding to make it two different things. Let's just have a closer look at that. So what I've got is um, a piece of wire here that goes all the way down the arm and the NeoPixels are daisy chained one after the other on the green wire. The orange and yellow are power and the blue and purple are going to be I squared C so I can network this Arduino with the others in the suit. So power will be provided from the um, rest of the body down this single wire. Um, data is shifted down the green wire for the NeoPixels and any more that might be in the upper arm. Um, and this 5 volts powers all the NeoPixels and powers the Arduino on the other end. At the moment it's plugged into a USB boost adapter, um, but that'll go away when I shove 5 volts in this end instead. I've written a very simple demo sketch in Arduino to just read those joystick and switch values and do some different things so we check it's working. Uh, basically I've taken a combination of the Adafruit NeoPixel basic example with all the setup here for the NeoPixel library, initialising the NeoPixels and so on. And I've also uh, read in the digital pin here which is uh, input pull up which means that um, basically when you push it it goes to ground and we don't need any pull up or pull down physical resistors. So we've got the pixels begin there to initialise the NeoPixel library. And what I've done is um, basically read in the X and Y potentiometers on that joystick and the button into variables called VRX, VRY and button which is a digital button. I've said if the button is zero, which is what happens when it's pressed, then basically very simply colour in all five NeoPixels to 255 for all three colours, so they go bright white. Um, it waits for half a second, just so they stay on for a minimum of half a second. And then if it's one, when you let go of the button, it colours them into zero. For the uh, Y-axis joystick, I've actually said if it's less than a value of 100, so if you push it in one direction, then do this sequence, which turns on and off the pixels in order, um, all the way through the chain with a delay in between. Um, if it's more than 800, which is the other end of the scale, then it does basically the stock fade example, but for NeoPixels. So this is the example that I adapted last time for Alien's Head. Um, this one will basically fade all of the NeoPixels up to the brightness value and back down again while we hold the joystick in that position. I've also left placeholders here for the x-axis so I can make that do something else. So that'll probably be networked over I squared C to open the inner jaw in the head or something like that. Um, these, none of this code is probably going to be final. This is just a demo to show that the joystick makes something happen. Um, it's not particularly optimised, but it is easy to understand. So I've got everything installed there. I've got a black sleeve and a black glove on. I've dipped the lights down a little bit so you can see. I've got uh, the red light in the Arduino Nano there. So I've got my hand controller with a little joystick. So if I press the joystick, all the lights come on, minimum of half a second. If I push the joystick one way, and I get that nice glowing pattern. If I push it the other way, and it sequences through, and it does that for as long as I hold it, because essentially the loop just goes round and round doing the same thing. And as I say, these functions will trigger other functions in the suit, 
they may influence the head lighting, the lighting in the body, and I could extend this NeoPixel chain up the arm to put some more lights into the bicep and shoulder there. Uh, the other thing, as I mentioned, will be the forward and back motion on the joystick will do something else. That will likely open the inner jaw and the outer jaw of the head so that we get some sort of effect there and we can control the animatronics, possibly also make the lights all flash while it does that, or any number of other options that I can code into Arduino. All right, so that's all I've got time for in this episode. I'm gonna be extending the control system and the lighting system in the next episode, hopefully getting some animatronics in the head working. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for updates on this project and other projects. And also check out my social media pages in the links in the description to this video for sneak peeks and updates.